Venus has drawn people's gaze to the sky since the dawn of time. Named after the goddess of love and beauty, the bright planet shining in the evening sky was considered a symbol of grace and splendor, a bright jewel that played a special role in ancient myths. But appearances were deceiving. In the 20th century, science discovered that behind the dazzling glow, there was no paradise, but a world of extremes. Venus is not a friendly evening star, but a relentless inferno, corrosive clouds of sulfuric acid, temperatures of almost 500 degrees Celsius, and pressure that crushes steel. It's not the loveliest, but the deadliest neighbor of Earth. Venus is the third brightest celestial body after the sun and the moon. The path of this bright spot in the sky has inspired researchers and poets alike. In the past, Venus was thought to be a star that moved very quickly. It was only with the advent of the first telescopes that it became clear that we were dealing with a planet. Venus often dances across the sky accompanied by Jupiter, which shines almost as brightly. Mars, on the other hand, is harder to see due to its reddish color. Traditionally, Venus is the planet of femininity and Mars its male counterpart. The two are our closest cosmic neighbors, and it came as a great surprise when Russia landed probes on a foreign planet for the first time. In the 1960s, the lovely Venus turned out to be hell. The world of Venus fantasies, tropics, jungles, and alien civilizations. Before the first space probes set their sights on Venus, it was a planet of dreams. It shone brightly and mysteriously in the sky as the goddess of the morning star. Poets and thinkers dedicated verses and entire epics to its bright beauty. In early science fiction, Venus became a stage for the unknown, a tropical paradise shrouded in thick clouds, beneath which steaming swamps, vast jungles, and strange creatures lurked. In the pulp magazines of the 1930s and 40s, Venus was home to beautiful, mystical Venusians, half human, half fantasy. Authors such as Edgar Rice Burroughs and Otis Adelbert Klein depicted it as a humid, green world where brave astronauts swing through lianas and fight reptilian beasts with ray guns. The atmosphere was dense but breathable, the flora lush, the cities strange and golden. It was a Venus that had more in common with Atlantis than with geology. These depictions were not only romantic, but also an expression of a time when space was still mysterious and hardly explored. Venus was the destination of human desires. It smelled of adventure, beauty, and the unknown right in our cosmic neighborhood. The Soviets land on Venus, the great disillusionment. Venus or Mars? When Soviet space travel faced this decision in the 1960s, the choice fell on beautiful Venus. The first successful Venera probes reached the surface of Venus in the 1970s and early 80s, a milestone in space history. In 1975, Venera 9 was the first probe to send an image directly from the surface of Venus to Earth. And that was also a moment that confronted humanity's imagination with reality. What the camera captured was not a lush jungle landscape, but a rocky, barren plain under a yellowish, diffuse sky swallowed up by the dense atmosphere. The images showed flat, angular rocks scattered randomly across the ground. If a tropical paradise had ever existed, it had been destroyed. What remained were obviously desert landscapes of sharp-edged or roundly eroded stones in a uniform gray. The ground looked dry and dusty, almost like baked clay. There was no movement, no variety of colors, no signs of life, only the silent presence of a planet whose extreme heat and pressure have made life impossible for billions of years. In 1982, Venera 13 transmitted the most famous images of Venus. Color panoramic images showed the uniform brown-gray hue of the surface and the hazy atmosphere even more vividly. The shadow of the probe itself appears like a foreign object on a ground that seems strangely familiar and yet completely different from anything known. These images were a scientific triumph and, once again, an emotional disappointment. All probes that landed at different locations showed the same desolation. The images from the approximately 20 Venera missions are still the only real photos of the surface of Venus. Magellan and the Radar Revolution, Venus Revealed. When NASA sent the Magellan probe to Venus in 1989, it was clear that optical cameras would fail here. 
Venus's atmosphere is so dense and opaque that even the most powerful telescope can only see a milky yellow wall. But Magellan had a different plan. It was to use radar eyes to penetrate the dense veil and deliver a whole new image of Venus. Instead of photos in the traditional sense, Magellan sent back radar reflections, which were converted into topographical maps. The surface was mapped almost completely for the first time and displayed in false color images. Elevations, materials, and structures became vividly visible through different shades of color. What was revealed was a geologically active world. Huge volcanoes, kilometer-long cracks, and flat plains marked by lava flows. Particularly impressive was the discovery of Maxwell Montes, the highest mountain on Venus, which rises over 11 kilometers, higher than Mount Everest. The volcanoes Madmons and Sifmons also showed signs of recent volcanic eruptions. Magellan's images looked like something out of a dream. Surreal, colorful, but scientifically precise. They showed a world seething beneath its cloud cover. Magellan was a breakthrough. The images do not show us what Venus really looks like, but how it is constructed. Venus Express, Europe's view of Venus. The Venus Express mission showed yet another side of Venus. The first European space probe designed specially to explore Venus was launched on November 9, 2005 from the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan and entered orbit around the planet on April 11, 2006. The mission lasted until December 2014 and provided valuable scientific data over a period of eight years. This time, the research objectives were primarily the atmosphere, climate, and geological activity of Venus. With a launch mass of 1,270 kilograms and seven scientific instruments on board, Venus Express was specially designed to study the dense and complex atmosphere of Venus in detail. This revealed details about the cloud structure for the first time, and since the mission, we now know the chemical composition of the gases and their interactions with the solar wind with considerable accuracy. Venus Express detected a thin ozone layer in the upper atmosphere, captured spectacular images of a double vortex at the South Pole, and found evidence of former oceans. This reignited fantasies that Venus could once have been a tropical green world. And lo and behold, numerous simulations based on data from Venus Express showed that this could indeed have been the case. Many billions of years ago, before the greenhouse effect turned the surface into a furnace, our beautiful neighbor could have been a green and possibly inhabited world. The probe was also able to create a complete temperature map of the southern hemisphere showing that despite its extreme conditions, Venus still exhibits dynamic processes that may be remnants of its once lush world. Venus Express was a milestone for European planetary science. The probe was based on the technical design of the Mars Express mission, which accelerated development and reduced costs enormously. It showed that nations can achieve significant scientific advances even with a relatively small budget and Venus Express inspired other space agencies to work on their own planetary exploration strategies. Parker Solar Probe, a fleeting glimpse of Venus in visible light. The Parker Solar Probe's destination was and is the Sun, but on its way there, the first solar probe in the history of space travel used Venus as a cosmic springboard. During several flybys between 2020 and 2022, it pointed its whisper instrument at the night side of Venus. The result was a minor sensation. The first real images of the surface of Venus in visible light since the Venera probes, only this time taken from orbit. The images show a dark, glowing world. Continents such as Aphrodite Terra and Atlanta Planitia are visible as faint silhouettes. The images were possible despite the thick cloud cover because some of the glow from the hot surface penetrates the dense atmosphere. The result is not a clear image like those we are used to seeing of Mars or the Moon, but a Venus in a ghostly glow against the backdrop of the stars. Particularly impressive is the glowing oxygen halo of Venus, which forms in the upper atmosphere and is visible in the images as a fine arc of light. These images were not only technically remarkable, but also emotionally moving. Venus does have the power to touch us and gently change us, glowing hell or not. Da Vinci and Veritas, NASA's return to Venus. 
It was a sensation when scientists announced the discovery of biomarkers in the atmosphere of Venus in 2023. To investigate these traces of life beyond Earth, NASA planned two ambitious missions to Venus with Da Vinci and Veritas. The launch is scheduled for between 2029 and 2031, and the goal is to explore the atmosphere and surface of Venus with unprecedented accuracy and search for traces in the micro range. Both are part of the Discovery Program, which promotes entirely new, cost-effective, and scientifically highly relevant space projects. The aim of the project is to clarify all open questions about the inner solar system through many more inexpensive probes, so that at least our understanding of our immediate cosmic environment becomes complete. Da Vinci stands for Deep Atmosphere Venus Investigation of Noble Gases, Chemistry, and Imaging. The mission consists of an orbiter and a spherical descent probe that will sink through the dense atmosphere to the surface. This would be the first real landing since the Venera probes. During the descent, Da Vinci will analyze the chemical composition of the gases, especially noble gases and trace elements that could provide clues to the history of Venus's formation. In addition, high-resolution images of geological structures will be taken, with a particular focus on the so-called tesserae which may provide clues to tectonic processes. Veritas is an orbiter that will map Venus using state-of-the-art radar technology. The Venus Emissivity, Radio Science, INSAR, Topography, and Spectroscopy Probe will create 3D maps of the surface, measure the emissivity of rocks, and search for active volcanoes and tectonic movements. The aim is to find out how far geological activity on Venus currently extends and whether processes such as plate tectonics or subduction are still taking place. Of course, the researchers also hope to find out what was behind the simulations of a tropical green world and whether early science fiction authors might have been right after all. Envision, Europa and Venus, Part 2. Envision is the second space probe planned by the European Space Agency, ESA. Starting in 2031, it will conduct comprehensive research on Venus. The mission's goal is to study the planet from its inner core to its upper atmosphere and gain a better understanding of the interactions between geological processes and the climate. Envision is part of ESA's Cosmic Vision program and is being carried out in close collaboration with NASA, which is contributing the Synthetic Aperture Radar System, among other things. The mission aims to clarify why Venus and Earth have developed so differently despite their similar size and location. To this end, Envision will investigate how the surface and interior of Venus developed geologically, how active the planet is today, and whether there were once oceans. If so, traces of them should still be found in the oldest rocks. At the end of the mission, we should have a fairly accurate idea of when the extreme greenhouse effect began and why Venus became a scorching world. Technically, Envision is equipped with state-of-the-art technology. The probe will be equipped with several radar instruments that will map both the surface and the subsurface layers. Three spectrometers will analyze the chemical composition of the atmosphere and rocks. A subsurface radar sounder will look up to a kilometer deep into the ground. The instrument package is supplemented by a radio tracking system that measures Venus's gravitational field and allows conclusions to be drawn about its internal structure. Subscribe now and be the first to see every new video.